This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Over the course of this chapter, as we're creating tables and stuff, I've been showing you some SQL, SQL, that I've just kind of been blowing past at times. So now we're going to cover some of the minutia that you've seen, but I haven't really explained. So now we're going to talk about primary keys and unique keys. And I'll start off with a unique constraint. A unique constraint makes sure that any row inserted will be unique for a set of columns. So if I create a unique constraint, such as what I have on the screen, I'm saying the address, if you look, I've got name, address, salary, commission, start date. We've seen that quite a bit. I'm saying constraint address UK, I'm giving it a name, must be unique on address. So I'm saying you can't insert the same address in two different rows. You can't update the address to be the same in two rows. We got our columns. We're going to look at our constraints. We see that address position one, and we're saying it's a unique constraint. It's enabled, and that's the index that it's using. A unique constraint creates a unique index behind the scenes. A unique constraint can include multiple columns. A column that contains a null is not included in the constraint. That means that you can have multiple rows where the address is null. I said this has to be unique address, so if you actually enter an address, it has to be unique. But you can have many rows that have a null. Unless you set the column as not null, it just won't put it in the unique constraint. But if the address contains any data at all, it must be unique across the entire table. A primary key, conceptually, is a lot like a unique constraint. So now I'm going to create a table test PK. I still have my unique on address. But now I'm saying name is not null primary key. Unlike the unique key, a primary key cannot be null. Even if I didn't put the not null, it would enforce that it was not null. You can't have a blank primary key. The primary key is made up of multiple columns. It's a composite key, or it's one column. None of the columns that make up the primary key can be null. It has to have a value in every column in the primary key. Let's take a look at the table. That was my test PK. You see, this time I've got my unique that I created earlier. I've got a check constraint that says, don't let this be null. And I've got my primary key. We can see that my address UK, I could have given my primary key a name also, but I didn't. That's this one. So it's got a system generated name. And then the primary key and the unique key both generate indexes to enforce the key. A check constraint does not need an index. It just makes sure it's not null. The indexes that it uses are B-tree indexes. You can actually create the index first and then tell it which index to use. If we look at our indexes here, you see that the UK and the PK are both unique indexes. They don't have to be unique. That's just the way Oracle's going to do it. So if I created my own index, I'm going to create a new table. I have the not null constraint, but that's it. Now I'm going to create a couple of indexes. I'm going to create one for my primary key, that's this one, and one for my unique. So I am going to create a unique index on my UK, but my primary key, I'm just going to create a regular B tree. The thing that's going to force the uniqueness is going to be my constraint, not the index. So I just run both of those. Both are created. Now I'm going to alter my table. And this is how you make changes to the structure of your table. You would use an alter to add columns. In this case, we're going to add some constraints. So I'm going to add a constraint, my test, PK, PK1. I had to add the one because that's what I called in the other table. My primary key is name, and I'm going to use the index I just created. My constraint, test, PK, UK, is a unique constraint on address using the index I created for the unique. OK, so now we have our test, PK, IDX has been altered. Go ahead and look at that table. So we're looking at our indexes here, still the same index as we had before. Look at our constraint, our primary key, and it's using the test PK, PK. So it knows which index to use. It's not unique, but it's going to enforce the unique by the constraint. So as far as what a primary key is, it's the unique identifier for a record. Obviously, it's unique. So you don't want to have duplicates, but it's also the key that you would put into other tables that refer to it. In a relational database, it's all about the references between the data. 
So the PK would be your entry into a related table. The PK is often referred to as the table key, whereas other unique constraints might be referred to as an alternate key. That pretty much explains primary keys, unique keys, and how to create them. Next up will be foreign keys.